today, and welcome to La Liberty Baptist Youth uh, Wednesday night Bible study, uh, live streaming, of course. And again, 2023, and we're so happy to start off this new year with our first message with uh, Brother Lennon. He has a message that he has in his heart to share. And uh, before I continue, some announcements. Uh, this month, January the 29th, we will have our general um, assembly for our members of La Liberty that will happen on January the 29th at 1 o'clock p.m. After service on that Sunday, we will have pizza for the members um, to, to eat uh, for lunch, and upon which, after that, we will come back to the chapel and we will have our general uh, meeting for the year to go over some key household items that we have to talk about as members of this church. So if you can make it, please put that on your calendar. Um, and then also, um, on your screen is our um, tithing through online, um, if you wish. You know, we are a small church that uh, neatly um, would uh, request if you have it in your heart to, to help in, our, in terms of our ministry, to donate uh, financially. Uh, if you want to partner with us, please um, text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to that number on your screen, and then it will direct you to a secure site that you could uh, give financially according to what God puts in your heart to, to help us um, continue this ministry. And then also, we have... Um, for the Lao Baptist Youth, um, the, the, the Lao Liberty, the youth account, we, we have the QR code where you can scan your camera on your phone and then um, donate to the youth um, account so that we could then, you know, uh, camps, um, any other things that the youth may, may desire to kind of continue this um, fellowship between our uh, youth group. Uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to give it to Olivia and Claire. They're going to lead us this year in praise and worship. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Order, please rise for praise and worship.
Heavenly Father, I thank you that we're here together today and that um, we're able to pay information to the Lord in this um, new, new year and that for this year that everyone um, is to be closer to you, God, and have a closer relationship with you. And also I want to, um, for um, Brother Lennon, while he gives the message to the Lord, whatever that you felt to give to us, Lord, that hopefully we're able to use it for our daily lives and just through this week, Lord, and even possibly the year. And also for the people that couldn't make it, that hopefully they will make it next time. And that for everyone that has um, school and work, that you be with them, Lord. You give them the strength to go through it. And just remember that you're always with them, Lord. In your name, Jesus Christ, amen. Good evening, Scotty. Was it one? And hello, and good evening to all of you who are joining us on Facebook as well. Uh, it's a new year. We hope that we can improve on what we did from last year, and God willing, that um, we hope to go as far as God takes us. Right. So, um, so with that being said, I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer. Let's go and join me in prayer, please. Uh, gracious Father, as we start the new year, Father, we just pray for your guidance, your provision for us as a church, how to move forward, what we should do, um, how we need to commit to uh, not only those in the church, but those uh, who may need help outside the church as well. How to approach that, how we can uh, be effective. Please uh, provide with the resources, the tools that we need to uh, to make to 2023 as a as a I guess a success but more importantly than being a success is just trying to be obedient to you in every way, every way possible we want to uplift those who couldn't be here uh, please be with them wherever they are be with us here as we are uh, um, as as we're going to hear the message from what you put in my heart, Father. Be with me as I do my best to convey your message only through you, through your spirit, and may our hearts and and ears be receptive to it. I pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So quick question. Who can say out loud the uh the most famous Bible verse, John three sixteen? Anybody? 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 Just say it out loud, as loud as you can. Even in Lao. I don't care if it's in Lao or in English. If you can say it, say it out loud. Go ahead. <laughs> I saw a hand raised. That's why I looked over there. Go ahead. Go ahead and say it out loud. All right. And so that's probably the, the baseline of evangelism right there. For those who want to outreach, they use that as a tool to kind of introduce Christianity into people's life that way. But have we ever thought about the verse after that, John 3.17? And so if we go to, go ahead and let's go and go to the slides. So, but this message is, is called, Who Are the Condemned? If we go to John 3.17, which is the next slide, if we read that, I'll read out of the Bible. You can read off however you see it. John 3.17. It says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And again, the question this in the beginning slide is, who are the condemned? The question this for us to know that is, what is the word condemn? If I'm on the right page in my notes. All right. So before I get into the word condemn, I'm going to kind of 
kind of outline what this verse really means to us. So coming on the tales of uh, the most memorized Bible verse in the Western world, which is John 3.16, this verse tells us something important about the way Christ viewed his own mission. He was not here to condemn the world. One obvious reason is that the world was already condemned. And so if we turn to John 3.36, it says, <clears throat> John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. So even before Jesus came onto earth, the world was already condemned. The meaning of condemn, according to the Bible, means to declare wrong, to pronounce guilty, to sentence to punishment, or to pass judgment against. It's almost as you're being disowned by society or by family if you were condemned. What's the root cause of being condemned? This should be a simple question, should be a simple answer. It is sin. We as sinful people are already condemned because we are sinful by nature. Just like the days of Noah, there was sure destruction for sin and sinfulness from a holy and righteous God whose character did not allow for any position towards injustice, provision, uh, uh, perversion, and rebelliousness, which so permeate, permeates the world in its fallen state. And just like the mercy of God for his elect, who was Noah at the time, and his family, God has set aside the church to be objects of mercy. Just like he instructed Noah to build an ark, he has sent his one and only son to save those who would believe. Not to push the metaphor too, metaphor too far. Just like Noah and his family, they had to choose, they chose to get on the boat. And those who would be saved must put their faith in Jesus to save them from the wrath to come. If you remember the story of Jesus walking on water, who was the disciple who trying to reach out to Jesus? Who was one of the disciples? Does anybody remember who that disciple was? If you need to refresh it, it was Peter. If you remember, Peter saw Jesus in the distance walking on water. Peter, in his joy, said, Jesus, Jesus, let me come out to you without thinking that he was going to sink. He just saw Jesus, not knowing that water was going to be below him. It was Peter's faith that held him up above water until he realized he was walking on water. And then he panicked. And he started to drown. He called out to Jesus there, from there. What would have happened if Peter just faithfully walk, walked towards to Jesus without realizing that he was walking on water? It's kind of like a metaphor for our faith is right. We know that Jesus is here to save, but do we always pay attention to that? And so, so I, I mentioned many, but, uh, many messages ago that uh, when talking about our unbelief, it is also considered a sin as well. So there are a lot of human actions that doesn't work well in our favor that are considered sin. And that's why, that's why for human nature, we're, we're naturally going to be sinful. And so we are, and then therefore we're going to be condemned as well by our own actions, not by God himself. And so if we read on to scripture more, if you turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 says, And to wait for his son from, from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, 
who rescues us from the, from the, from the coming wrath. And so this is a more merciful, this is more merciful than most people would ever grasp because in our sinful nature, we cannot accept that we are, what we are doing is wrong. Nor is it offensive to the creator for objective moral reasons. Even us, us as born again Christians, sometimes we're not able to grasp it because we're so influenced by our own flesh. But to grasp it is truly a key to joy, thankfulness, and a perspective that will drive us to follow God who has saved us. Praise him for his grace and mercy towards us. And trade all your possessions to buy the field with the treasure. Uh, so this is out of reference out of Matthew 13, 44. We turn to that real quick. Matthew 13, 44 says, and this is the parable of the hidden treasure and pearl. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. So in regards to that, it's just, we can, in our lifetime here, with our short life here, we can accumulate so much things that we can buy for ourselves or for others. But truly, what, where does a real treasure lie? And so I hope in your heart and your mind that you know you have true treasures that are stored up in heaven that are waiting for you. And so, um, so that's what that entails. And so I bring all this up because we're actually going to go back and talk about the main verse, which is out of John 3, 17. And so reason why is because we have to be reminded. We are the condemned. We are people who are sinful by nature. And that's a problem. For human beings are like other us. We're innate problem solvers, whether we realize it or not. If we have a problem, there's a need to solve it. And there's a need to, there's a solution for it. For us as sinners, as the condemn, that's a problem. But what's the solution? How can we solve that? And this is what J John 3, 17 teaches us. So, so for the first point of three, uh, John 3, 17, the word for, the verse comes because you remember the Kindle in John 3, 16, what is the first word? For. Now in John 3, 17, what's the first word? Or again. So, all right. The verse comes because of the previous verse, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That one came because what precedes it? It, it was a conversation with Nicodemus about regeneration before one can see the kingdom of God. It's about the fact that son of man must be lifted up and believed on. So the word for, this is what it represents. And so before anything can happen that could save us, something prior to that must happen, whether good or bad, indifferent, whatever. In order for us to get to the, to the point where we need to go, if Jesus, if we call Jesus, if this is a race, oh, I'm sorry, if this is a race and Jesus is happening, is at the finish line, then that's who we need to reach. What happens before has to happen, whether it's your difficulties coming across this race, whether you're handicapped, whether you're unhealthy, whatever it may be that may be obstructing you to get through this race in order to reach Jesus, it has to happen. Because ultimately, we know that Jesus is ultimately our saving grace, and that's what's waiting for us. So that's one part of 
of the verse of John 3.17. The second point is that it's kind of calling the verse all together. It's kind of giving us a meaning for it. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus Christ was indeed sent by his father in heaven. But it was not for the purpose of condemning the world. Remember the word condemn. It means to either bring guilt upon, to bring wrong upon, to punish, or even to disown. Jesus didn't come to do that. While you remember, if you read back in the Old Testament, there were many ministries that, and the prophets back then, they, they would hope to bring, to draw sinners to Christ, or not Christ, I'm sorry, to God at that time, because in the Old Testament, this is before Christ's time, most of the, those ministries served as a ministry of condemnation, unfortunately. But it was done as an aspect to to be accountable for God's people who claim that they have not been warned. And so, this is the verse that kind of relates to that. If you turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 7. It reads... Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 7, it says, You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. So even then in the Old Testament, the workers of God were, were commanded by God to say, speak my words. Does it matter they listen or not? For... In their position of life, they were rebellious. They were not living the right life. They were not righteous. But the workers, whoever may be priests, who, whoever at the time in the Old Testament, they were told to relay the word of God because it was to warn and not to condemn. The ministries of the Old Testament were doing, as, as I said, were doing their best to draw people to come to know God, but most ministries were more or less condemning people for their sin and often would advise them to atone for their sacrifices. If you remember how people in the Old Testament needed to atone for their sins, they had to give up their sacrifices, whether it's through the possessions, through their animals that they possessed it, um, what may have you. As this continued on, it ultimately became a problem. Imagine having a never-ending problem that would disrupt your life and not have a solution or a cure to solve this problem. The continued sacrifices of the Old Testament was more of a treatment than it was a cure for those days. This continues to reflect today's society and how people view, view life. They are rebellious one way or another. They act out in ways that are not godly. Whenever we speak of God's word, it's not to condemn, but to warn. Not only to warn, but to offer a solution to the problem as well. So the difference between how we would live now than what we did in the Old Testament is hope that we can warn, but offer a solution as well. Which comes to the third point of John 3.17. It says, But to the world. Rather, Jesus' ministry was to seek and save what was lost. If we turn to the book of Luke, chapters 19, verse 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. It says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Many people were asked, why would Jesus come and save us? Because he knew there were people that need to seek for Savior and that they were lost. Plain and simple. But also, if we look into Luke 4, 18,
Luke 4, 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is in me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners and recover the sight of the blind. Oh, I read. Just want to make sure I'm on the right track. Okay, yes. So part of the point three of, of John 17 where it says, but to save the world, in those two verses out of Luke, that's what he's pertaining to. He wanted to seek and save the lost, but he also wanted to announce the Lord's favor for every one of us and set us free as captives from our own nature, our own sinful nature, and to not be condemned. The last point of this verse of John three seventeen was through him. That's the last couple phrases of the verse. Jesus was not on, would not only preach the, the message of the gospel of the kingdom, but he would be the message. Not only through his death on the cross for us could the wrath of God for sin be satisfied. Consequently, anybody who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And so, and so when we talk about the probably the as again from what I what I talked about in the beginning, the most memorized verse as far as John three sixteen, that's the baseline of what Christianity is. But I think the follow up to that John three seventeen is important as is important as well. There are many people out there who wonder what their place is in the world, what identity they identify with. There's a lot of lost people who are, who are feeling this way as well. But I come across a lot of people who, who try to talk, about, talk to God about, that's one thing. But if we talked about church with him, that's another thing as well. Those are two separate things. I think for us in the year 2023, if we look around and see all these empty seats, there's always a potential to fill those. But what if God gives the opportunity to fill this church? What would we do with that? How can we service them? It's not enough to fill seats, but what are we doing as members to feed them the right way? Feed them to feed them the right information, to, to give them the right expectation of what Christianity is, right? And so because what would draw them to a small church like, like us than a mega big church that has all this money and they can invest into? And so what's the main difference between those two? Hopefully, as a small church, we can show them that, hey, you could talk to us. We're accessible. We can feed you the word of God as, as it directs to the Bible. And so, and I pray that, and I, my, my continued prayer from 2022 will extend to 2023. We as a church, we have to find ways to, to live up to the Great Commission. Because if you look at this, the statement of Lao Liberty Baptist Church, it follows this almost the exa same exact statement of the Great Commission. The question is, have we been living up to it? If not, how can we? This is a problem. Now, how can we solve it? That's another thing I pray that we as Lao Liberty would do too. If there are problems, are we equipped enough to offer solutions and can solve them? So, while we are the condemned, we know there's solutions to, for, for us not to be condemned, and that's Jesus Christ.
and that's something we we had to preach outside of these church walls so that um, that would be my message for tonight but hopefully an ongoing message for 2023 as well so with that being said I'm going to close this out in prayer uh, gracious God we thank you for tonight thank you for just the message that you put on my heart just to remind us of who we're doing this for why we're doing this for Lord you give us the ability to to solve our own problems in our own lives whether we're parents who can attend to our children's problems whether we're laborers who know the work environments and if anything were to break down they have the ability to fix them whether we're students if we had difficulties figure out a problem we could find ways to solve them ourselves whether with the technology in our hands or with the know-how of, uh, of us using our intellect to solve them. You gave us innate skills to solve problems. Lord, we know there are many problems with the church. I'm not saying our church, but just the church itself. We just hope that as 2023 continues that we can address these problems, but also find solutions too. And that we find them in you. Lord, as we um, continue to live out this year, let us start off on, on, on a strong note with you, to, abide on, to do our best to abide in you, to obey you, to know that you're here with us. And so I pray that we, together as a church, can come together and just come to you with our, with our needs, our problems, whatever it may be. So with that being said, I want to lift this up to you and, and pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.